In a message saluting Nigerians on this year's Christmas, the People's Democratic Party PDP has urged Nigerians not to lose hope. Despite the tough economic times, it blames on the four and a half years of the All Progressive Congress APC. When will the blame game end? Although it looks like the PDP just woke up from their slumber. Well, uh, to have this conversation once again, we have Jide Benson. He is a political commentator. Now, Jide, a lot has happened in Nigeria. You and I have, I mean, it's like every three days, something new. Uh, something new happens and distracts us from the old, you know. It just keeps coming. And we never seem to see the PDP play the kind of opposition the APC played when the PDP was in power. But then it's like they're waking up to their responsibilities. Uh, what's your take on this? There's a lot of room for improvement on the part of PDP <laughs> to play the opposition game. Don't forget that um, the PDP is learning to play the opposition game because the APC or the AD and the CPC together and AMPP played it for what, about 16 years? Yes, from between they did. 1999 mm -hmm. and um, 2015. So yes. they grew into the role of the opposition. Um, and so the PDP is learning the ropes as it were. Mm -hmm. um, as to the message of hope, yes, it's, it's a good one. But regardless of whether the message came from the PDP, Nigerians have, have shown that regardless of what happens, we will weather the storm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are a few cases of dispersion here and there. There are people who are committing suicide, there are people who are jumping off bridges, there are people who are having to rally around one another. But the who, people who are running away. Yeah, yeah there are a lot more people I'm sure who half are of running. Your friends are moving to Canada. <laughs> you're, you're very correct in that regard. Maybe not, maybe not up to half, but a lot of them have gone and many, are, many more are on the queue. And even those who are here, they're only here in body not in spirit and so so it's a good one coming from the PDP. I mean hope is um, hope is a good thing. Um, if you remember the 1993 elections, the most widely claimed to be free and fair, the singular message was hope. Mm. The singular message of um, the Obama government, oh, sorry, the Obama um, aspiration to mm. was hope. So hope is a good thing. Um, we will remain hopeful. I mean, this time. How too long shall, are we supposed to this remain? Time, this too shall pass away. I'm, I'm very, I'm consoled and comforted by that. Uh, that nothing of this nature skepticism. lasts forever. I, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm a journalist. I ask yeah, all the questions. Um, we seem to say we're hoping for better, yeah. and then the opportunity comes yes. for us to change our yeah. lot yes. to better, yes. and then we bring worse, yes. and then we start hoping all over again. When do you think that Nigerians are going to learn? Before we come back to what the PDP has to yes. say, because we keep every Nigerian saying yeah, we are we're praying and hoping on God to. Okay. I'm sure that the Chinese have God. The the guys in Singapore have God, and yeah. China, you know, or even well, we let's not go too far. Ghana has God, and they have and a good probably president. Probably not as religious as we are. Um, regarding hope, I think we just need to see a glimmer of hope. And um, on the part of leadership, uh, where we've been unfortunate with inspirational leadership in Nigeria for a very long time. We have not seen a president that, we've not had a president that can make a statement or say something that Nigerians will run with and get excited about. If anything, we make jokes out of such things because a lot of such things you can tell that they're not from the heart. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that uh, many times they speak off the cuff and they're not speaking what they are doing. I'm bringing down to close to close to Lagos or your state. We we see a semblance of a visionary leadership. He seems well, to be the poster yeah, child. He, he, for he, he, that's what I was going to lately. say next. He's a poster boy of good governance. We need a lot more of such. And and again, that's a testament to um, youth leadership. Give give the youth a chance, because um, those who say give the youth a chance, it's not just giving the youth a chance. Give the youth who has shown capacity, competence, and character. Um, you can draw parallels between Kogi State and Oyo State. Both governors are youth, and I'll challenge you to pick who you think is a focused youth or a forward going youth. I'm not picking nobody. <laughs> but let's come back to what the PDP yes. um, said in their statement. They, uh, they were actually wishing us uh, a Merry Christmas, but yes. they also posited that though Nigerians are hurting and are unable to celebrate Christmas and the youth tide, I'm unable to celebrate. There's no money. <laughs> but you have to be at work anyway. <laughs> for the first time in a long time. Now, he, okay. he says, uh, they said that the way we used to celebrate Christmas is not how we're celebrating it now mm -hmm. because of the hardship yeah. of the last five years, but yeah. that we must keep up hope. Yes. Now, in 2016, yes. the APC national chairman at the time, John Oyegun, did say that 
the Mohammed Buhari administration was going to come and restore Nigeria's economic uh, economy back to health and all, right. but that the PDP should be blamed for economic woes. Well, that was 2016. They were yes. just coming into office. Yes. But then it's almost five years down the line, yes. and we're still hoping for this economic woes to be over. Yes. Why do you think that it's been so difficult for the APC administration to figure out what we need to do in terms of the economy? The APC prepared to win election, didn't prepare for governance. Simple. But that could have that could, that excuse could have worked in 2015 all the way down to early this year. It still subsists. Really? What have you seen differently? So you're telling cabinet? me that in four years, yes. a government cannot get its acts right. It can. They cannot see all the mistakes that they made to plug the loopholes. You're telling me that you would spend four years in the university, make the same mistakes, and then you're given a chance to come back to school, and you make the same mistakes. And the APC prepared to win elections, did not prepare for governance. If, if, the, if the party prepared for governance would at least have seen a difference from this, when the, the government got re-elected. So let's say that 2015 there were, there were groups that had to be pacified or settled or rewarded for the role they played in bringing the government to power. Upon 2019, we should have seen a different cabinet. We should have seen a cabinet that we can be happy about, that we can believe in. President Obasanjo had a cabinet in 1999. The cabinet in 2003 was different. You had, you had some names that it was a give super Nigeria cabinet. hope Permit and excitement. Yes, it was a super indeed. cabinet. That's what I expected. The best of technocracy that's, the that's what I expected that we would have seen in, 2000, in 2019 when the list of ministers came out. But it's the same of the same. Do, do we see any change, the change that the APC promised us yes. happening anytime soon? Or should we be looking forward to the end of this administration so that something better can come? Where, where do you stand in all of this? So it's very possible. There just needs to be a change of thinking. The president needs to listen. The president needs to speak. The president needs to accept that he cannot use the mindset and orientation of 1984 to govern a 21st century, in the 21st century era. Um, there's been so much talk about where Nigeria ought to be. We've talked about Vision 2000, Vision 2010, 2020 is now upon us. And before you know it, 2050 will be here. I don't know what legacy the president would like to leave, but he has three and a half years, or a little over three years, to be able to improve on his performance and governance. And unfortunately, when people like us say things like this, uh, we are deemed to be voice of the opposition or anti-progress, people who benefited from the old system. Thankfully, I am not any of those. But the president should realize that he can do a lot more. The president recently, I think last week or so, complained about the slow process of democracy in the country and that he would have had it, he would have wanted to have it the way it was yes. when he was a military administrator, a military uh, president. But then that he realizes that this is a democracy, but he wishes that, you know, he could do what he wants to do. Do you think that maybe the president's hands are tied? Could it be also that, um, we're part of the problem of Mr. President, hence the reason why he's unable to bring about the kind of governance or good governance that we're hoping for him to bring to us. Clearly, we are part of the problem and will continue to be part of the problem. How he, so? He hung himself out to dry. I mean, he, the people did not say, come and run. He aspired to that office four times. And that brings me to my other question. If you, back to the university question. Yes. You have tried to get into a university yeah. many times, and Jam has jammed yeah. you four times. Okay. And finally, lock it. smiles on you. Yeah. Are you going to play the whole four years? Are you going to just go about your business and do whatever you like? Because should that not be a time for you to prove yourself after so many years of waiting? That's what ought to be, but unfortunately, that's not what is. Again, I said this is a man who's, who ran four times before he eventually got it. And 
one of the things we started to hear when he eventually got into office was that he wished that he had been president earlier, that he was going to beg Nigeria. I mean, so clearly that was, a, that was an issue about capacity. And if anything, um, he, would have been, he should have been able to take advantage of the people around him or he should have put together an excellent team. President Obasanjo wasn't particularly a star boy, but the team that he put together made him shine, at least in the second term. We've had, we've had presidents in other countries who are much older than the presidents. But they've deputized themselves with very good people. They've surrounded themselves with the best of, of hands and minds, such that they continue to get all the glory and the shine. That's what I expect from the president going forward. The cabinet that he has today is not the cabinet that he needs today. It's a political cabinet. It's a reward system. And that's not what he needs in the very last lap of his time to govern Nigeria. Well, we still have three years to go. Um, as we get ready for 2020, which yeah. is a year of accomplishments for not just the United Nations, but several yeah. other mm -hmm. countries uh, all over the world. What's your projection for Nigeria, a Nigeria under a Buhari-led administration in 2020? A projection? Same of the same. No, no glimmer of hope? Same you of talked the same. about hope Same here. of the same and more of the same. I mean, I'll talk about, because these things are possible, but with the, with the person we have, we have at the helm of affairs. I mean, you talked about, I think at some point you talked about um, the statement by, I think was the, <coughs> excuse me, about the US government saying that Nigerian Christians are being persecuted. Yes, we are on now, that public, list. Public relations solves a lot of problems. If I were the president, on the strength of that statement alone, on Christmas Day, I would have gone to worship in a church. I would have attended a carol service in the last one week just to show that I am not a religious bigot. United Arab Emirates, listen, United Arab Emirates, to all intents and purposes, is, a, is an Islamic nation. I saw a picture recently of somebody praying in a mosque and there was a Christmas tree there. Yes. During Ramadan, Christians are invited to join Muslims to break their fast. So what more public relations can you talk about? Such is what I would have expected of the president. Because in 2015, when the president was still aspiring to that office, at the beginning of every year, Lagos State has something called, Lagos State has an event called, I think is a, is a state Thanksgiving. The president attended that event. That was when he still needed the votes of the people. And he's gotten what he wants now, he's discountenancing the people. Well, it's a sad situation. Unfortunately, we'll always have to hold our breaths until something happens. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Jide Benson, he is a pub political commentator. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, I'll give you my take. Stay with us. The Nigerian army has promised to continue to tackle insecurity, crime, criminality, and terrorism nationwide. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Barata, made this pledge in Abuja as he commissioned the new accommodation for personnel of the Nigerian Army at the Bohamenu Buhari Cantonment located in Giri, Abuja. The Minister of Defense, Major General Bashir Magashi, who was in attendance, said the construction works had begun since 2018 and is proof of the federal government's commitment to improving the lot of Army personnel. General Magashi said government will continue to dedicate funds to the needs of the military. It is pertinent to state that the accommodation commissioned today was captured in the 2018 Ministry of Defense capital budget and subsequently a large chunk of capital projects for coming years will be dedicated to the barracks development and rehabilitation as well as other critical needs of the Army. This would ensure that the personnel of the Nigerian Army and in these armed forces reside in decent and modern accommodation for better productivity. This is part of the responsibility of government which the administration of Muhammad Buhari is poised to accomplish. Our officers and soldiers as well as their families are well accommodated not only in the FCT but across the country. The Nigerian Army will continue to be professionally responsive in tackling the security challenges in the country. Accordingly, no stone will be left unturned in our effort to rid the country of criminals and terrorists. I therefore solicit the cooperation and support of our host communities, particularly the leaders and the youths, for harmonious 
coexistence. This is the reality. We must, we must live together and we must support each other. It's time for my take. In the spirit of Christmas, it's a season of giving love, time, attention. And all we ask of our governments as a people is that they listen to us, is that they hear us, is that they do what we ask. Because you, Mr. President or Mr. Governor, Senator, House of Rep member, Mr. Um, House of Assembly member, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Local Council officer, you were not put there to serve yourself or your family members or your political party. You were there to serve us, the Nigerian people. We, the people of Nigeria, we cast our votes because you are supposed to better our lot and not do whatever you think is best for you. Everything you do, every decision you make, one way or the other, is either going to be beneficial to us or it's going to be destructive for us. Which would you rather work for us? And don't forget, you're not going to be there forever. So the time that you have there as a leader is to do the right thing so that you would have posterity judge you rightly or rather hang you out to dry. In the meantime, as we celebrate Christmas, take time out as a leader, a politician, whoever you are. Think about the reason why you wanted to run for office. If it's for the good reasons, you start doing the right thing. But if you ran for the wrong reasons, you need to reevaluate why you're there and start doing right. I am Mary Anna Cohn. It's been Plus Politics. <laughs>